Make sure it's correct. Okay. Okay. So let, let's have a class. Now, everybody should have your results. Let's talk about those tubes first. Okay. So you have those three tubes, fermentation. I just want somebody to show others the results. We have glucose, lactose, and uh, sucrose. Okay, let's look at the E. coli. Who has E. coli? Whose inoculation is E. coli? Okay, you guys. So I'll just I'll just bring one uh, as an example. Is that okay? Okay, when you see here, so everybody look at the glucose, what do you can see? For glucose, it's completely yellow. Can you see that? Which means it's acid fermentation positive. And then when you see on the top of the Duran tube, there's a bubble, which means it's gas positive. I just give you an example. I'm not going to go over everything. So for example, E. coli. You can look at your own stuff, okay? E. coli, you will see. It's gas positive and lact lactose positive. Uh, this is showing you yellow color and the gas you will see the Duran tube has bubble. Okay, very clear. Now you can see, let's say sucrose. This is also E. coli, you didn't see anything. That means a little bit of pink, but definitely no gas. Now let's look at lactose. You see the same thing. See lactose? It's yellow color and on the top there's a bubble. So for E. coli you will see lactose. Uh, this is glucose fermentation also positive. And the lactose fermentation positive. It's yellow and there's a gas. So uh, I just give you an example, a typical example of E. coli. You can look at your own to record it. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know every bacteria how they grow, but that's a typical example for E. coli. And it's a good example for sweet tube fermentation. Okay? So that's the first one. Second one, let's look at your urea tube. Who has Proteus vulgarius? Who has Proteus vulgarius? Give, give one tube to me. Just one. For Proteus vulgarius. No, not no. no. The urea tube. I want the urea tube. You have a look at the urea tube. Okay. So we have Proteus vulgarius, and this is E. coli. And the Lee, you can take a picture of this one, if possible. This is the one very obvious. It is one positive, one negative. Okay. I want to just uh, so you can see these two tubes. Don't take me. Just take a picture like this. I can put on the e campus possible. So urea tube, you will see. We have Proteus vulgarius, which is, you see it's pink, or we say it's cherry red, that is positive, and the E. coli, which is actually is, a, or we say just the original color, so just the original color. That's why it's negative, okay? I believe all of the sample of the bacteria you have, Proteus vulgarius, is the only one is positive. Most of the others are negative. So I'll return this back, back to you, okay? Now you can recall the your situation on you, bacteria. I mean, I don't know everything. Like I said, the Staphylococcus aureus might be also negative. But I know Proteus vulgarius is positive, so I just gave you an example. Proteus vulgarius is positive. Okay. This is the first. This is the first of things. Second, or oh, this is second. S uh, third, let's do catalase test. Okay. You should have agar. I say that you have Staphylococcus aureus and E. coli. What we should add there? We should add H two O two. Is that right? I want everybody to do it right now. Add H2O2 on you. Find the agar place, which is, has Staphylococcus aureus and the E. coli, which is you do for your catalyst test. Then you add H2O, H2O2 there. 
Do it. Don't don't look at me. Just do it. Yeah, just add H two O to uh, just give yeah, just give to uh, all there. Yeah. yeah. Very easy. Just add. You will see one side is bubble, very obvious. Just uh, add it there. On two side, add some. Just dump some. You see one side is bubble, very very obvious. It's like a like a boring like. Which side? Is that Staphylococcus aureus? Yeah. So this side will be very obvious that you see a bubble ring. And E. coli is now. So Staphylococcus aureus is catalyst test positive. And remember I said that, that is to differentiate Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. Okay? I had a video which is on the YouTube channel already. So did everybody find it? Looks like boring, is that right? Bubble comes out. That's very, very important. But remember, you should never do this on blood agar. Otherwise, you pour it, you find it. Because blood agar is oxygen. Okay? Number four, I want you guys to test the called oxidase test. So, oxidase test, let's do that. Uh, Karen, can you do like like this? We have only two, so I want to save a little bit. Just uh, two of them share one place, you put one drop. Okay. And the Lee, if possible, you can do the other side. Just to put one, one drop there. Let's you use that one. Two of you can share one, and just one drop. Just one, one drop. So you're going to have the place ready, which is Cedomonas and E. coli. So Cedomonas aggregate, which is PA side and E. coli. We just gonna add a couple of drops there. Two of you share one place. You can share with your bench partner. Okay, then you can see which side is. Just one drop each side. Very quick, just one, one, one drop each side. You see which one turns purple. Then you see which one is positive. It's very obvious within one minute. You have to do this within one minute, remember. Which one is positive? You should see which side, very obvious is purple. Yeah. You guys can share one, yeah, okay? Is that good? Okay. Which one is purple? Is that Cedomonas? Is that Cedomonas that is purple? Okay. So Cedomonas is oxidase test positive and the E. coli is negative. Now this is very important to test. This is a test used to compare Cedomonas aggregate versus a group of bacteria called Enterobacteria ACA. We will do the ACA test real quick. Called it calls the name called enterotuber because this is different, difficult to differentiate. Them. The reason is all these bacteria are gram negative, large shape, facultative, uh, lactose fermentation positive, gas fermentation positive. So it's very difficult to differentiate it. That's why we use oxidase test. Can do a very easy identify clinically, okay? Okay, that's good. Now number five. Let's look at your three plates. You have your three plates. We talk about uh, the bacterial enzymatic function. Let's look at you. First of all, look at your skin milk agar. We have Bacillus, Cereus, and E. coli. Which side do you find a transparent zone? Skin milk. Is that Bacillus side? <laughs> look at your plates. Don't, don't look at me. Is that Bacillus side? You see a transparent zone? Good. Okay, so it's positive. E. coli is negative. 
Okay, the second one, look at your split blue agar. Which side is, is transparent as well? We have Staphylococcus aureus and the E. coli. Is that Staphylococcus, is that Staphylococcus aureus part? Should it be? Which means Staphylococcus aureus has a lipase. This guy has lipase. And this guy, Bacillus, has caseinus. Which is, means Proteus. Okay, now a little bit complicated for the last one. This is starch agar. What you should do? You're not gonna see the transparent zone, is that right? What you should do? You're gonna pour the iodine there. We see which side is turned brownish, is that right? Okay, I wanna. Who has that? Who has the plates? Can borrow one to me? Which is a starch agar. Okay, thank you. So you have a starch agar. We put bacillus and E. coli. So we we wanted to do an iodine conformation test. So what we're going to do? We're going to add iodine. So the, I'll do it. You can do it. You do it your, yourself. I want a gram iodine. Where has the gram iodine? Some of the iodine is being uh, used a lot, so I will find one iodine. This one right here. Okay, just, just, just use one to me. I can do this for you, and uh, Lee, you can come here to take a picture. So we want to be putting these on the side. Okay. We want to put the other side, we're also going to put it. We want to mix it. Now, I want to borrow, who has another one? Who can borrow me another one? Can I have your place? Can I have your starch place? I hope it's good. Okay, I'll do the second one, Lee. So we're going to be doing this. We pour the iodine here. We pour the iodine here. We mix it. You should be seeing the starch, which is reacted with these, and uh, one side will turns brownish color, and the other side is not. So it seems like from here it's not very obvious. I didn't see which side will turn brown, the brownish color. The other side is not. Now, not very obvious. I don't know. Maybe it's old. So this one I can re I can return back to you. Which side turns brownish, which side is not. You actually can pretty much see that. That turns brownish, this is, 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 is like still black. So you can see that. So which side is still brownish? E. coli side, is that right? E. coli side, you can see a brownish color. And this one, you see the you see the iodine is on the top, but did not really turn brownish. So what that means, you see the brownish, which means uh, starch is still there. So starch prevent. And on the other side, you didn't see brownish, which means uh, starch absent, absence. So which means this bacillus uh, bacillus subtilis is amylase test positive. Remember, I said that we need to twist it a little bit of, of, of your mind. Okay? 
When we see there, you see the starch side is actually E. coli side, there is a brownish color, which means the starch is present. So the amylase did not use it, which means they don't have amylase. But on the bacillus side, you see the starch is absence, which means the amylase is there because they hydrolyze the starch. Let me see one more time to see what, what it looks like. But it's been there a little bit of while. Now, the idea what you should do is that this side, you should leave a little bit of space. Then we'll see, see the difference. Here, we probably pretty much we cannot see anything. Okay. That, 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 that's okay. So that's also the results what we talk about. Okay. So we talk about all these results. You're gonna have to record it. Typically, the that first couple ones. Okay. We're gonna still continue to do three tests today, including one enter tube test. Let me see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, we have 13. Uh, you maybe everybody can use one. I have 25 for one box. I guess you mean the second lab will be eight. We'll see, we maybe just do a pair, okay? For, for the enter tube test. So today you should receive two fact sheets. One is for biochemistry testing bacteria two. Another one is called enter tube test. And the API 20E. API 20E, I'm not going to do it here. I wrote it there. You can read it through. It's a multi channel test, but it's more expensive and more complicated. Uh, uh, Entro tube 2, I have it. It's like a pencil. So we will do it. Um, we will do it. Looks like we're going to do a pair, which means two of you do one. Because this one, this one box is about $300. This one probably one. One channel might be like 20, 20 bucks or something. So I just want to save a little bit. Okay. Now other tests we will do. We will do three more tests. So what are those three tests? Number one is called the SIM test. SIM test we call it one shot. Three jobs. Okay, so what are they? S means sulfide. I indicates indo. And M means motility. Now, this test is a little bit of difference between what we did before. We are using loop the whole semester so far. But this test we will use it is needle. Okay, so this test is a little bit different. You need to have a needle ready. Then you have this tube. So you have a needle go inside straight like this. So Lee, do you want to take a picture for, for, for me? So you take it out, you will be put this needle in straight in and then go out so that's one shot to do three job don't use loop i'll tell you why okay so that's the first thing you need to know one shot one shot three job use needle not loop so first of all why we have to use needle we're gonna first talk about the motility how do we know bacteria having the motility? This agar contains 0.5% melted agar. So this is a semi-solid medium. Now, how do we know a bacteria is have real motility? How do we know bacteria do not have real moving motility? We put needle in, we want to see, right in the middle, we want to see where the bacteria are going to move in after incubation. So after the incubation, if the bacteria stay in the middle, which means bacteria do not have motility, which means no motility. 
In other words, if you see bacteria moving around, you see bacteria everywhere, cover the whole. That means it has strong motility. Now, how do we know bacteria have a strong motility? This is determined by flagella. Okay, do you still remember what is called a monotricos? What is this called? Ampitricos. What is this called? Lephotricos. What is this called? Petrotricos. Is that right? Flagella, which means a bacteria has a real motility. Now, this is for bacteria. What is for fungi? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fungi is nine plus two. Flagella becomes flagellic. This is the spin. Okay, that's a real movement. So just let just let you know. We using semi-solid agar. Use needle injection to see the bacteria whether they have motility or not depends where are they after incubation. If right in the middle, no motility. Goes everywhere, they have a strong motility. It depends where the, what kind of the flagella they have. That's why we're going to find it. Okay? This is the first thing. The second thing what we want to talk about is sulfide. Now, here we're going to talk a little bit about anaerobic respiration. So you need to know why we do sulfide test. Some of the bacteria, their electrophilic acceptor is not oxygen. It can be other inorganic chemical. For example, sulfide. Okay? Then the bacteria could be using sulfide and reduced to become SO4 sulfide acids. Okay, they can be going through anaerobic respiration. They can use the energy, but the energy of course gonna be lower than aerobic respiration because of this difference between the voltage value of the initial donor and the final acceptor is smaller than aerobic respiration. Now how do we know the sulfide has been reduced? Become sulfide gases. Inside of this agar, there is an ingredient. There is called a metallic ingredients. For example, iron is inside. Once the bacteria has been reduced to sulfide, the eye will turn black. So, if you see two weeks from today, so we have a holiday next Thursday, on next Tuesday, two weeks from today, if you see your tube is black, which means it's sulfide positive, because the me metallic ingredients like iron, in iron inside of this media will turn black. Now we left one, which is called indoor. What is indoor? This is a byproduct of tryptophan, TRP. So some of the bacteria can use amino acid like a tryptophan. Now what is tryptophan? This is tryptophan. This is TRP tryptophan, okay? Some of the bacteria can use tryptophan. They break down. Right here. Now what are the two parts? This side is indole. How about this side? This is amino pyruvic, pyruvic acid. Now why it is important, every time when you see this guy, pyruvic acids or pyruvate, they couldn't go either way. We call it a metabolic intermediate. They couldn't go fermentation, they couldn't go phantosphosphate, or they could go 
aerobic respiration TCA cycle. So once you see these kind of intermediate metabolic products comes out, it could be let bacteria survive, go any metabolic pathway they like. So we're going to test it where the bacteria use the tryptophan. So we test it where the bacteria generate endo. How we test it? We got to have this tube, okay? You use needle injection already. Goes in, goes out. How do we know it's positive? Two weeks from today, you're going to add a one drop of a large drop of a reagent called Covac. If this Covac turns cherry red, which means it's indo positive. Okay? So the work is very easy. You just put a bacteria there, but the story behind that is more important. So that's called the SIM test. One shot, three jobs. That's the first thing what we wanted to do. Okay, second thing. We call it filler lalani filler la la ni test or we easily to say PHE test that is another example for some of the bacteria use amino acids so what is the filler uh, okay This is a philalanine. Now, what is a philalanine means? It's amino acids. You can bacteria can use it. Now, how bacteria use it? They do deaminase. What means deaminase? Which means they take out amino acids base. They take out of this guy. Okay. Once they take out of this guy, what they become? What is this part? Bino pyruvic gases. Now what is phenol pyruvic gases? What is the what is this guy right here? Is that glycerol dehyde two phosphates? Glycerol dehyde three phosphates? Then phenopyruvic acids, then pyruvate. What is this called? Glycolysis, is that right? That's why this guy is important. Because they can 